Um, today I'd like to talk to you about concurrency, what it is, why we need it, and a rather new language called Pony that helps us uh, creating uh, safe concurrent code. Uh, a little disclaimer first, there will be no code in slides, so if you're here to see how actually Pony looks like, I'm sorry. <laughs> if we have some time, then maybe I can show some examples at the end. Uh, my name is Piotr Buda. I work at a company called, so called Software Mill. Uh, we are a completely remote company based in Poland. We tailor custom software for our client, client needs. Uh, you can find my uh, GitHub at github.com slash pbuda and at Twitter I'm just Piotr Buda. Okay, let's talk about concurrency. Uh, what is it? Um, I like to think about concurrency uh, in a way that mm, if we have a computation to make, uh, we can split this computation to uh, small tasks um, that we can execute in a disjoint and overlapping way. So this, th those tasks can be scheduled in parallel um, on multiple processors uh, or in arbitrary slices of time uh, on a single core or, or single processor. Uh, those tasks are, are executed in uh, unknown order. We cannot make any assumptions uh, of, of execution of those tasks. Um, however, we can say that uh, a task is actually a sequential, uh, uh, a linear sequence of operations uh, that are executed sequentially, but uh, we cannot determine the order of, those, of this execution uh, relative to other tasks. Uh, but making our code uh, prepared for concurrency isn't uh, enough in itself. It doesn't give us any real benefits. Um, but because the code runs can run in parallel, we get uh, a few real great benefits, actually. Uh, so efficiency, uh, we get it because we don't want to our processors to sit idle and do nothing. And that's a waste of time, that's a waste of resources. So if we can execute our tasks uh, concurrently on several processors, uh, we get them, we get uh, all of them to be used. Uh, moreover, uh, concurrency allows us uh, to scale our, uh, our code, our application, because we can add more and more processors to execute this code, uh, so we can increase throughput just by adding uh, more processors. However, concurrent programming is hard. Uh, it's uh, often not easy to, to create code that runs safely uh, in a concurrent manner. Uh, and the main reason is that we don't know the order of execution, right? So uh, there are a lot of, a few issues that can happen that may make our lives uh, miserable. Because I don't know how many of you tried ever debugging uh, concurrency issues. Right. Okay, so... Uh, I think that we have three kinds of uh, problems that we can uh, uh, spot when, when trying to uh, write concurrent code. So we have atos uh, atomicity violation. Um, so uh, let's imagine two threads that uh, try to do something on a, a shared object. Uh, one thread checks whether this object is null, and if it's not null, it tries to invoke a, a method on it. But in the meantime, it's, it gets halted, and a second thread kicks in and sets this object to null. <laughs> now when the first uh, thread resumes uh, and it tries to call this uh, method, uh, it gets a, a null pointer error because the object is already set uh, to null. Um, order violation, um, it's something that sometimes we depend on some specific state to, to perform an operation. And it can happen that uh, we can initialize this state in one thread and perform the actual calculation in another thread. But since uh, we don't know how those threads will be executed, it can happen that uh, the second thread kicks in before the first one. So it, the second thread assumes that this state is, uh, it has some initialized state, but it doesn't have it. So uh, it will also uh, error out. And uh, we, this is also known as a data race. Um, that looks happen when threads wait for other threads to release their locks. So I, I will tell uh, about locks in a, in a few seconds, but 
basically, uh, okay, let me go to the next slide and um, we'll talk about it here. So uh, in the past few years, or many years, uh, we came, we as developers came with several uh, ways to tackle concurrency issues. Um, we have synchronization and techniques like share nothing, sharing immutable state and passing isolated state. Um, okay, so synchronization is a concept of governing access to a shared resource by using logs. So basically, it's uh, mm, a log. I won't give a, a, a specific definition, but we can say we can think about it as a flag uh, that allows us to do something on a shared resource. So uh, when there is we have many threads that want to access uh, a shared resource. Uh, when the first one uh, gets it, it, it locks uh, the access to the resource, and all the other threads have to wait for this lock to be released. So this effectively helps dealing with atomicity and order violation issues. But in instead, uh, we can have deadlocks, because if uh, we have uh, locks for in through threads that wait for each other to be released, uh, well, it will never happen. So uh, there, there will, we will have a deadlock. But synchronization also introduces other issues, like starvation. Uh, if a thread has to wait for access to a shared resource, um, it can never get it, because other threads may get in line and uh, actually get the access before this thread, so it can wait forever. And also, checking whether you have access to a resource takes execution time from other threads. So if you have a, a thread that waits for a long time and checks all the time whether it has access or not, it takes time from other threads that could actually uh, do something mm, more interesting. Uh, there is also another small issue with synchronization. Basically, if you synchronize access to a shared resource, uh, you make this part of application uh, not concurrent, because if you access this resource in just one thread, all other threads have to wait, so it's not concurrent anymore. Uh, of course, we can fix this, uh, make it a bit more uh, safe by using uh, finer synchronization. You don't synchronize whole operation or whole methods, but just the part that really needs to be accessed concurrently. But the problems with concurrency uh, occur only when, only when we share some state. Uh, when we don't share any state, there are no problems at all. Because if we have only operations that operate on, on their own state, that don't rely on passing any state between them, uh, they can scale perfectly. You can run them on as many cores as you wish. Um, they're perfectly concurrent. But, of course, it, it's not really very useful alone. Uh, I think that in Erlang, uh, all actors uh, are based on share nothing, but um, you also get message passing, which actually drives the data between actors. In fact, uh, not all sharing data is problematic, because if we share immutable data, we have no problems. Um, since we know that this data won't change in any actor or in any thread, uh, we can safely share it with others just to read. Uh, but this also has a, an issue, because if you want to change this immutable data, we have to make a copy of it, change it, and then make another copy that is immutable. So this requires uh, a lot of uh, copying, and that also takes time and resources. The last thing I'd like to tell you about is isolated state. Uh, if we can make sure that our uh, piece of data is modified only in one thread at a time, uh, well, we basically, uh, isolated state means that we give an exclusive access to the state to a thread. So uh, one thread can do whatever it wants with, uh, with the state, and it can change it and do whatever. But uh, if uh, this piece of data has to move to another thread, then it has to be passed from one thread to another. So basically, this means that the first thread gives up any uh, references to this data. It will never use it again. This isn't concurrent, 
Mm, because uh, since you still have to work in one thread, uh, you cannot work uh, in parallel on this data, but we can schedule it over time. So um, it's, it can be said that it's kind of concurrent. Uh, so for me, I'd like to have a language or some tool that would help me uh, use those uh, patterns um, to, that I could write some safer concurrent code that could help me um, guarantee that my ap application won't deadlock, won't fail at some point in time in production. And it would be also nice to have something that has nice syntax so that I, I don't have to wrap my whole mind around it trying to understand what's going on. So, meet Pony. Um, this is definition from the Pony side. Pony is an open source object-oriented actor model capability secure high performance programming language. Uh, it's a relatively young language. It was released uh, February, February last year. Uh, and uh, for a long time, it was uh, in a stale state. Uh, I think that uh, some more developments started happening uh, uh, during the summer. Uh, and now the last version was released last Friday, and it's uh, 0 0.9. Um, yeah, uh, it's uh, developed as part of academic study. Mm, there is this guy, uh, Sylvan Klebsch, I think, or Sebastian Blessing. Actually, those both guys created the language, but I think Sebastian Blessing actually uh, made a master thesis in which he outlined uh, the concepts of Pony. Uh, so there are uh, some other things used that, there, there are proofs for everything that uh, Pony uses. Uh, and when you visit the PonyLang website, uh, there are links to those white papers. So what is Pony? Pony is object-oriented. It has classes, interfaces, uh, traits, everything is an object, there are no nulls, there, no, there is no pointer at, uh, arithmetic whatsoever. whatsoever. Uh, it's actor model. Mm, it uses actors for running code asynchronously. Uh, it's type safe. Uh, it's statically typed. It helps the type system itself has a lot of uh, features that uh, help writing the safe code. I will talk about this in a second. There are no runtime exceptions. So um, Every error has a defined semantics, and the compiler ensures that each error is uh, properly handled in the code. Uh, to the point where you try to handle an error and the, the code that you wrap in the try expression, if it doesn't throw an error, compiler will also complain that this piece of code doesn't throw an error, so why use try? Uh, Pony doesn't use locks, so there are no deadlocks in data races. Cool. What other features do you have? Mm, classes, actors, primitives. Uh, primitives are like classes, but they don't have fields. They just group methods. There is only one instance per system. Uh, you can think about them as perfect singletons. It has nominal and structural, structural subtyping. Uh, nominal is, which means by, by name. So we can think of, uh, I don't know, Java interfaces. Uh, except that you can actually implement methods in interfaces in Pony. Uh, sorry, it's in traits because Pony uses traits for nominal uh, subtyping. And structural subtyping is like mm, duck typing. It all depends on the structure. If your object has a method, it can be, uh, it can be used. Uh, it has object literals and lambdas. Object literals are used for um, local anonymous uh, instances of types. Uh, and lambdas, you can create, well, you can technically do some functional programming in Pony 2. It has generics, pattern matching, something called CFFI, which stands for Foreign Function Interface. Uh, this allows Pony to call native code generated by other languages, like C, C++, uh, Java Native, uh, everything like that. And another interesting feature, uh, is that uh, Pony has per actor uh, concurrent garbage collector, uh, which does not have any impact on performance of the system. There is no post the world pulse or, or something like that. So um, it's also quite nice to read about it, but it's a bit complicated to, to speak about. 
Formally statically typed. Mm, it's a compiled language. Uh, but why does Pony need to be statically typed? I know that some people don't like static type languages, but in this case, it's actually very, very useful. Uh, because Pony, Pony compiler can actually understand the code you write because it performs static analysis of it. And because of that, uh, the type system of Pony makes some nice guarantees that uh, affect the, the, the programming experience. So, for example, it enforces concurrency patterns like this isolated state uh, or uh, uh, in, in, in immutable state uh, sharing. Uh, but also, uh, if your program compiles, uh, then Pony compiler uh, guarantees that it won't crash. Uh, that there will be no unhandled exceptions, uh, that there will be no deadlocks data races, and that we will never have any null references. Uh, Pony compiles down to LLVM bytecode. Uh, do you know what LLVM is? Basically, LLVM stands for Low Level Virtual Machine. It's, uh, so Pony compiles the bytecode to LLVM, and then there are implementations of LLVM for different platforms, and LLVM is responsible for compiling this uh, bytecode into machine code for the specific machine. Pony is also, also an actor model. It uses actors to run code asynchronously. Uh, actors are basically objects that don't provide synchronous access to their state. Uh, what's also nice in actors is that they are very light because they only have like 250 bytes of memory overhead and idle actors do not consume any resources except for this memory. Uh, data between actors is uh, shared by using messages. Uh, and it's actually also a nice concept because uh, messages use zero copy passing. Uh, I don't know how, whether it's called like this, but basically you don't send actual data, but you just send pointers to this data. Because of the type system allows a few things, uh, it's really possible. It also uses uh, causal message ordering. It's a bit hard to explain uh, in a short time, so... Um, I think Greg mentioned yesterday to read uh, Mr. Lamport's uh, paper about messaging, uh, message ordering. Uh, it's, it's nice to read it. Um, actors have behaviors. Behaviors are like methods, uh, except that uh, methods can return some, some values. And in case of actors, they don't return a value, but the actor that it was called on. So we can, for example, chain uh, behaviors on an actor. Actors themselves are sequential, which means that code in an actor runs sequentially, but we can compose actors uh, to achieve concurrency. But one thing that makes Pony uh, different uh, is something called capabilities. So the definition is a capability is an unforgeable token that designates an object and gives the program the authority to perform a specific set of actions on that object. In case of Pony, this token is actual object reference. Uh, why, is, why is this reference unforgeable? Because we don't have pointers. We cannot invent a pointer to some, some piece of data, so... Um, it gives the program the authority to perform a specific set of actions. So if you have a, a token or this object reference, you can do things with it. Think of it like... Um, if you have a car uh, and you want to, uh, and your, your friend wants to borrow it, you just give him the keys and he goes to drive the car. You don't need to, I don't know, set up any security uh, inside the car because the car doesn't care uh, who, who, ride, who drives it, right? Those tokens are revocable, so if you have the reference right now, you can do things, but your reference can be gone. You can uh, pass it to someone else. But capabilities are actually, so objects are capabilities, but uh, in order to be able to um, do things, we have to uh, somehow mm, use, express access rights to those objects, right? So Pony also uses something called reference capabilities. Um, 
those capabilities tell you what you cannot do with an object. This is uh, a bit tricky. Um, so in Pony, every object has a type and a uh, reference capability. That's why reference capabilities are type qualifiers and, and are always part of a type. Uh, I will tell you about those capabilities now. So in Pony, we have uh, six uh, reference capabilities. These are ref, which stands for reference. This is your normal data. Uh, mutable data that you can locally do whatever you want to. Uh, we have a val, which is a value, immutable data. Uh, we have a box, which is uh, data that is basically read only to you, but not quite. <laughs> we have ISO, which stands for, for isolated, which is isolated data. TRN, which is transition, which is basically write only to you and a tag which is uh, called an opaque f capability, which is meant for identification, but also um, you can call behaviors on tags. So by default, actors, not only by default, but you cannot change the reference capability of an actor. All actors are tags, so you can uh, call behaviors on them only. Let's talk about those capabilities uh, in more detail, because I think that this actually is the most important thing in Pony that mm, makes it different from any other uh, programming language. So, reference. No other variable can be used by other actors to read from or write to that object. So this means that we can have many variables in our actor that hold reference to this data, and they can, those uh, variables can do with this data whatever they want only in this one single actor. Box. This is, as I've said, a bit trickier because no other variable can be used by other actors to write to that object. Uh, notice that it only speaks about other actors. So this means that other actors may be able to actually read the object and other variables in the same actor can uh, be used to write to it, although it cannot happen at the same time. So you cannot have a, a variable that can be uh, mutated by, by a variable in your actor and then the actor cannot read it. This will also be a bit more clear in a few slides. So basically, Alice can uh, read the data and can reference another reference can mutate this data, but if this data was globally immutable, uh, then other actors can also read this data. Transition. This is also tricky. No other variable can be used by any actor to write to that object, and no other variable can be used by other actors to read from or write to that object. So, a TRN variable is the only variable anywhere in the whole program that can write to this object. But other variables held by Alice uh, may be able to read from this variable. Uh, we can say that uh, TRN is write unique across the whole system. Um, you can use TRN, for example, when you want to be able to uh, change objects, um, but then want to share this object with other actors. Uh, as globally immutable vals. Value. No other variable can be used by any actor to write to that object. So basically, this is globally immutable uh, data. Uh, it's, um, this capability um, is called a sendable capability because you actually can use those references to send to other actors. So you can share data. Uh, with vals. Isolated state. No other variable can be used by any actor to read from or write to that object. ISO is, uh, it, it means that uh, ISO is the only variable in the whole system that can write and read uh, from that object. Uh, it is read and write unique. Uh, so if you want to pass data safely, as I mentioned before, 
we have to give up our rights to read or write to this data. And this is uh, what ISO is used for. Um, so uh, ISO is uh, used to pass data between actors. But if we don't need to pass data, we can use refs, right? And the last one is a tag. This does not make any guarantees about any other variable at all. Uh, so as I mentioned before, you cannot read from it, you cannot write to it, but you can pass identity with it. So you can, for example, pass uh, tags between actors and compare to some other data. And as I mentioned before, you can call behaviors and tags. So this allows us uh, to compose actors for concurrency. But because of those uh, capabilities, uh, things that we do normally in other languages uh, get a bit tricky. So consuming objects, we have... Mm, consuming a variable is when you want to move uh, one variable to another variable. Mm. This is necessary because, for example, you cannot hold two variables uh, that are ISO that have references to the same piece of data because ISO guarantees us that this one variable only exists for uh, one ISO variable exists to, uh, with a reference to this data. But uh, we can use uh, something called consume in Pony that allows us to move uh, one variable to another. Uh, this basically leaves uh, the old variable empty. And then this old empty variable cannot be used uh, because if you use it, the compiler will complain. Uh, why do we want consume? Uh, we want to be able, for example, to make local aliases of a TRN variable. Uh, so we have to guarantee that there are no two variables that can write to this object globally. So we have to take the reference from one variable and pass it to another, and then we have a, a, another alias of a TRN, but it's only one in the system. The the only limitation of consume is that you cannot consume a, a field from an object because this would leave the field empty and that would be unsafe. So in Pony we have something that's called destructive read and <coughs> it uses uh, the fact that uh, in Pony uh, assignment expression returns the old left hand side value and not the new value. So if you assign uh, B to A, then in return you get A. And so we can use this to actually consume fields. It's hard to explain without code, but um, sorry. Another concept is called recovering capabilities. So recovering lifts reference capabilities of the result. Uh, it's used primarily to get an ISO that we can pass between actors. Uh, but it's not limited to just that. We can, for example, um, so the recovering, uh, it has a, a special keyword called rec recovery, recover, sorry. And in the recover block, you can do whatever you want. For example, you can create a complex mutable data structure uh, that in the end you want to pass to another actor. So you can create this data structure in a, uh, in a recover block and then share it or as a val or pass it as an ISO, whatever. You can also, for example, borrow an ISO. So uh, if you get an ISO variable, in a recover, recover uh, expression, you can uh, convert it to a ref, operate on it, and in the meantime, uh, pass this uh, ISO to some other actor, and it just works. Another usual thing that we don't care about in other languages is aliasing. So what is aliasing? It's assigning uh, value to a variable, uh, right? And, mm, so we have more than one variable uh, pointing to the same object. Um, in C, in Java, we don't care about this because we just write a, a new variable, uh, copy the reference, right? It, it just works. But uh, with Pony, because of the capabilities, we cannot do that so easily. So, uh, 
we can say that we can uh, um, alias an ISO variable as a tag because um, since ISO is the only uh, write read uh, variable pointing to, a, a di to some data and tag does not allow reading or writing, uh, we can have uh, an alias, uh, a tag alias to an ISO variable because it uh, still uh, keeps the guarantees that ISO gives us. Also, the TRM can be aliased uh, for a box because we want to, we, uh, we have to prevent our alias from writing, but at the same time allow our original TRM variable to be able to uh, continue writing to the subject. Uh, there is also a concept of em ephemeral types and alias types for uh, capabilities. Uh, so basically, if we consume a variable, uh, we don't always know uh, uh, at, at the time uh, whether we can... Um, uh, so ephemeral types are required because we can return something that is not possible to alias. Um, and we write this uh, with using the dash symbol. Also, the alias types uh, is just a, a short way of saying whatever we can safely alias this thing as. These two are mostly used in generics. Uh, I will not cover generics, sorry, but uh, these are also quite uh, difficult to understand. Uh, subtyping. Uh, so, subtyping is, uh, we can say that we need to, to s sometimes we need to supply other types to, to methods. For example, we have an app API method that requires uh, a ref, but we have a, a box variable. Can we call that? No. So, uh, there's also the simple substitution alias and ephemeral substitution. These are, uh, are uh, a bit uh, different to each other, but in this diagram you can see uh, how we can use the simple substitution. So if, we, if our API methods needs a box, we can provide a ref or a val, because uh, um, uh, a ref guarantees that no other actor can uh, read from or write to that object, and the box just guarantees that no other actor can write to that object. So it's, mm, it's safe. Um, so subty subtyping is uh, transitive, uh, which means that uh, if we have a, a method that requires a box, we can provide it with a ref, with a val, with a TRN or ISO. Uh, similar rules exist for alias and ephemeral uh, substitution, but are also out of scope. Actually, it took a bit less time than I hoped. <laughs> okay, so, in summary, we want our code to be concurrent, because we want to, our applications to run fast. Uh, we want to be able to scale our application, applications easily. Doing so, doing writing concurrently safe code, uh, it's hard. Uh, hard to spot issues, hard to debug issues. Um, but over the years we've come up with some patterns uh, that we can use to make it sane. And Pony uses uh, those patterns uh, and a few other uh, things that actually help us with uh, writing uh, concurrently safe code. And the most important and novel feature of, of Pony are capabilities, and they make the whole thing uh, possible. So Pony can be found at ponylang.org. Uh, there is a tutorial, um, quite extensive one. Uh, it's really very good tutorial. It's not some yada yada, but uh, it does make good examples. Um, the second link is for uh, Sebastian Blessing's uh, master thesis, which describes uh, how messages are passed, uh, some things about garbage collecting, 
uh, and other stuff about pony except capabilities, which are covered in some other paper, but uh, I think I didn't put the link here. And the third thing is you can read about some thread bugs that I mentioned before, and I will publish this presentation at mm, uh, I want a pony build stuff 2016. Questions? Can you show some code examples? Uh, as I've said, it took uh, considerably less time to, to tell you about all this. Uh, I thought that it will take a bit more, and I didn't prepare any codes, code, but I have some very old example that I wrote last year when I learned about Pony that I can show you in a second. What value does consumed variable have? We, can have no, we can't have null references, right? Or is it null, but we can't do anything with it until we assign a new value to variable? So, the consumed variable is empty. It cannot be used, and compiler will complain about it. If you try to use a consumed variable, it will, throw an, uh, it will just shout at you. Um, it's not null. Uh, there is a, a special type in Pony called none. So, you can, for example, have a, your variable can be none. And that's it. Any more questions? Uh, now can happen at any time during runtime, and uh, none can be discovered by compiler, and it will tell you it's not safe, and that will, your your program will not compile. The reason is that probably because uh, immutable data uh, is okay until you want to change it. Change it. In Pony, you have zero copy uh, message passing. So uh, if you pass a message, you pass a reference. Um, if you had a, uh, only immutable data, then uh, since you are passing references to this data, you would never be able to change it. But using capabilities, uh, you can share this data uh, across actors and locally mutate it. Isn't it the killing the whole idea of actors because actor and DS, uh, actors they are stateful and uh, basically they protect the state. They yes. By changing, so the actor can only change the state and all request to the actor they are serialized. So why do we still need to be changed to be shared the state? Uh, Sorry, can't tell you the, about that, but. Uh, I imagine that uh, since actor has some state um, and it protects it, like you mentioned, uh, but uh, we want to, um, I don't know, maybe make some computations based on, on state of other actors or uh, aggregate some state or, um, I don't know, I never thought about it, actually. <laughs> but we can talk later. Um, as far as I remember, uh, th right now there are no remote actors in Pony. Uh, as I've said, it's quite a young language. Um, it's not trivial to do, uh, not only because you are passing references, but also because of the garbage collector. But I think that uh, there is some work done, being done on remote actors, because obviously uh, a language that uh, uses actors and doesn't have remote actors is not really complete. So. Uh, yeah, I think they are working on that, but we'd have to ask uh, Sebastian and Sylvan. Yes? Uh, you said that uh, you exchange your uh, reference between actors. Yes. So I think that Pony runs in a single process, but multiple threads. So I think it does have some shared memory, but I don't know the internal stuff. I saw the structure, uh, the C struct that is used to uh, pass messages between actors. Uh, so it has uh, like uh, um, the, the target actor to which it should be sent, the number of arguments uh, that should be sent, the arguments themselves, but only references, pointers. And I, I think that's it. So I think that since it works in a single process, it just uses some kind of shared memory, or, or whole memory that the process has is shared, but 
Um, uh, no, uh, apparently not. But uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know much about garbage collectors, so uh, ha we, we have to find something, some more information. Yes. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, no runtime exceptions. Yes. How far does that go? Surely you cannot guarantee that you won't get any runtime exceptions. Uh, so, uh, if your method uh, shows ex an exception, it has to indicate this. So you have to annotate it with a question mark. And then Pony can check um, whether your method throws exceptions. And if it throws, then you have to handle them. And uh, I imagine that probably uh, an out of memory error could happen. Mm -hmm. Actually, I never uh, tried that. So uh, the other kind of error is the null, null the reference. So this won't happen because we don't have nulls. Uh, but I didn't think about out of memory errors. Um, I'm talking about something more simple like uh, file not found. Uh, files. Uh, well, actually, uh, the concept of capabilities uh, is quite more uh, extensive than just the reference capabilities I showed you because uh, the reference capabilities are built into the language. But file access um, uses its own set of capabilities that are written in Pony. So basically, these are flags. So um, it can happen that, you, that the file you try to access doesn't exist, or you can try to access a file you cannot access, because you don't have capability to access that file. Uh, so basically, this is an error. So you're, when you try to open a file, uh, the I.O. throws an error, but it indicates that it will throw an error, that it may throw an error. So you have to wrap it in a tray try catch something. Yes? Uh, isn't that uh, an uh, actor model uh, against the basic idea of actors which is share nothing? Should we really call that actors? Um, well, actors uh, don't share any inside state, let's say, right? They still just pass messages between them. Yeah, but you can pass references. Of, to, to in some cases, yes. Only in case of isolated state. Because you cannot pass, you can pass references to globally immutable data, the vals, uh, which is safe anyway. Because you can think of uh, of this like I don't know, maybe some uh, shared global state. I don't know. It, it doesn't make real sense, but you can have some configuration for the system that is uh, a single uh, object, and it, you know that it's globally immutable, and you can pass it to all your actors. For example. Mm, there's a type in Pony called uh, env for environment. I don't know whether it's val or not, but um, no, maybe a better example. We have a string, which is by default a val, a val. so it's immutable. You cannot, you, if you create a string, you can change it. But you can uh, lift it, for example, to an ISO, uh, or well, not lift it, you can consume this variable as an ISO, and then you can change it, and then again share it. But it's still working on the same uh, reference. It's just that the capabilities define your access rights, right? So uh, we let you do something for a short time, and then if you want to, again, share this, uh, you, you have to give up something. Do you have an example for something? Like that? Um, as I mentioned, I mm, didn't plan for this. <laughs> uh, it seems like the concurrency is moved on to the decision of the data types. So if I have any data type, you decide if you want to change it concurrently, who should change. So basically, this decision is moved out of actors to the data type. Yes. Um, no, <laughs> the decision is yours as a programmer. It can be global, it doesn't have to be global, because you, your actor can have uh, refs, so it can have some mutable state inside it, and it just it, it won't expose it ever. Or it can expose it, because it can create a, uh, it can lift a ref to an ISO and send it to someone else. Because, I don't know, maybe it wants to die or something. But easily, for instance, I have an actor who basically uh, performs the access to some global state, it's like a cache, so for instance, the uh, normal 
methods like update and read. Why would I need these complex data types? Because I just can get the data. I'm the only guy who updated, and I give it back with some. Yeah, you think you're the only guy that updates it. Sorry. You you think that you are the only. I'm guy. pretty sure. Uh, yeah, you are pretty sure, and, and with that, you are completely sure. Actors? Yes. Uh, actors themselves are sequential. Yes. But so uh, I'm the only guy because I'm the only actor of that type. And actors, you can access them directly. I can say I would like to access this actor or this message, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's the only actor, then all uh, permutations on the data on the state which keeps this stuff in one thread. Why I still need this complex data type? Because I'm the only guy who changed it. Hmm. I don't have an answer for you right now. But maybe we can talk about this presentation. OK, so uh, as I mentioned before, I found some code that I created last year. It was a, a real simple example of a uh, chat client. So this is how it looks like. Um, I think that's pretty simple syntax. If you look at it, it doesn't have any uh, weird stuff in it, so so it's uh, quite readable. Um, one thing to note is, for example, that I, I mentioned that all actors are tags by default. So um, all the uh, all the capabilities are uh, there are defaults for capabilities. So, for example, uh, a class uh, by default uh, has a ref capability. So if I uh, I do that. This is exactly the same. But at this time, I can change it so I can say that my, probably this won't compile because it, it wasn't meant for this. But I can say that all types of, uh, all instances of my client will be ISOs. I can say, say this at this time. Also, <laughs> um, I can say it at this, at this time. Uh, that I want an ISO. It also won't work because I have to probably recover this. Uh, so it would look like this. Although this code is also, it may not work. And, um, uh, so you, it, you don't have to decide what you want uh, at the beginning. You can substitute those uh, uh, references. There's also uh, another problem that I didn't mention because I didn't, I didn't think that I will have time, but uh, there is also a whole logic behind accessing uh, aliasing types that if you have a um, ref client and you have a server ISO, uh, can you alias, what, what can you alias this for? Because obviously this all depends on the objects and, and fields uh, referen uh, capabilities. So there's really a lot of uh, stuff with capabilities that I didn't say about. Uh, so I do think it's, uh, if you want to know more about them, uh, you should head to ponylang.org. Uh, there's a, maybe I can show you that. Well. Uh, okay, I can't. Mm, yeah. So basically, there's a link to uh, a paper uh, by, um, I don't remember her, na her name. There's okay, collection of papers. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, I don't. Mm, there is a paper of by Sylvain, uh, sorry Sebastian, uh, which describes Pony. There is a paper by. Um, 
Sofia Drosopulo, I think, that describes capabilities and all the mathematical stuff with proofs and everything, why capabilities actually work. And also this uh, part for garbage collection. So uh, if you want to know more about Pony, uh, I think this is uh, a good start. Any more questions? Um, I think that the garbage collector uses uh, reference counting, um, some such stuff. I, I, I'm not prepared to answer that question right now, but basically um, in Java you have stopped the world, it makes a pass, it checks all the references, and if there are references to clear, it clears them and then resumes. In Pony it doesn't exist because garbage collector uses message passing uh, for, for building the reference graph. So it's concurrent garbage collection. So it doesn't stop the whole application for, for a few microseconds, seconds. So, but uh, it doesn't uh, list the uh, it as a feature like you can guarantee that your application will run and it w will not pause for more I'm sorry, I don't know. It, m it might have because uh, from what I see in Pony, everything has its guarantees. So maybe s there are some guarantees for garbage collector, too. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much.